It's such a rarity on this channel when a person becomes the topic of conversation twice in a row. So far, I think it's only been the case with a handful of people. But today, I'm proud to announce that one of our favorite new additions to the Coyote Lovely Rogues Gallery has come back into the fray. I'm talking about none other than our good friend, Shirtbusters. Let me just set the scene. It's about 2 o'clock on a Monday afternoon. The gentle pitter-patter of rain is hitting the window and you lazily slump out of bed. With a big yawn, you open up your laptop, go to Twitter, and what do you know? There's a new set of DMs waiting for you. Happy day, a new friend. You go to check them, and before you even hear yourself doing it, you can feel yourself laughing hysterically as you see the very person you just made a video on DMing you to both explain and justify his actions and proclivities. Oh, that's not a letter, that's a threat. Today, dear viewer, I'll be going over the DMs he sent me and commenting appropriately on them, including diving a bit more into specific situations I'd glossed over on our last go around and expounding on some of the things I brought forward. Because some of these DMs are quite eye-opening, let me tell you. Unfortunately for Shirtbusters, I've never made any promises to him about, well, anything, really. I've never promised I'd keep any correspondence between myself and him private. So, since he's elected to send me these messages entirely unprompted, then blocked me without waiting for any replies or my say on the matter, I feel it's only right to give at least some kind of answer. Now, without further ado, let's get into this. Hello, how are you? While I don't appreciate the fact you lied about recording me when all you had to do was ask for my permission to do so, I don't wish to hold any ill will against you. Lollicon may always be a touchy subject, and I understand it isn't everyone's cup of tea, but it'll always be something I'll never have a problem with. Now, Shirtbusters opens by asserting that I'd lied about recording him. However, prior to that call, there was never any discussion between myself and him. In reality, Shirtbusters had been speaking with another person entirely who invited him to the server we had the call in, and while that person may have promised he wouldn't record anything, I never made any such promises. In addition to that fact, I had already been recording that call before he even joined the server. All I was told was that somebody who defended Lollicon was going to join the server to argue about it with us, and I decided to start recording. Unfortunately, Shirtbusters, you don't have much room to be angry here, because you were the one who failed to tell everyone else you weren't okay with the conversation in our server being recorded. Shirtbusters continues on by stating that Lollicon is something he'd never have any problems with, which is a sentence I sadly fully believe. And while Shirtbuster states he wishes no ill will towards me over the previous altercation and video that followed, I hold nothing but the sincerest contempt for somebody like him. Lollicon may not be real, but the illustrations remain depictions of minors, and in my personal opinion, anybody who gets off to depictions of minors in a sexual context is nothing short of a degenerate who should be kept at least 30 feet away from children at all times. I drew that second drawing of Puppy Chan because of the lie. Now this one really upsets me. Well, we have an explanation of why Shirtbusters drew that second picture of Puppy Chan, the one that he posted on the 9th. Evidently, the fact I recorded the call was what spurred him to create and post the second image. In my last video, I stated that it was interesting that he elected to draw inappropriate artwork of Puppy Chan after being made aware she was not okay with it. But now we know the truth of the matter, which is that Shirtbusters weaponized Puppy Chan's discomfort to punish somebody else that she doesn't even know. Shirtbusters, I'm going to be very honest with you right now. Doing something that depraved doesn't endear you to me or anybody else. It just makes you look like a complete fucking maniac. And that string of tweets to Don E wasn't multiple apologies. It was a whole paragraph split into pieces. Now, now we're getting into the meat of what's going to be expounded upon in this video. Shirtbusters explains his multiple apologies to Don E were a single apology split into chunks. And while I think many would just find it sufficient for Shirtbusters to make a thread instead of spam tweeting at somebody, I actually want to take this opportunity to explore what he was apologizing to Don E for, which I failed to do in my last video. Shirtbusters had initially drawn more artwork of Don E's OC, much in a similar fashion to the Puppy Chan artwork, and Don E had seen this artwork and was made highly uncomfortable, in no small part to the racist depiction of her OC with certain features being exaggerated in... uncomfortable ways. Shirtbusters had, allegedly, gone so far as to do the same to her mutuals. However, as I don't have the tweets on hand to verify that, I will leave that with the asterisk of it being speculation, at least until more proof comes to light. However, returning back to my old point about multiple apologies, as well as not meaning them, 
I still do not retract that claim. As you can see by this video even existing, as well as the confession of creating the second piece of Puppy Chan solely to get back at somebody else entirely, that claim is still more than valid and completely substantiated in my opinion. Now these next few DMs I'll just be reading to you directly, because I don't suspect there's much I need to comment on with these given that almost everything I could say in regards to them has already been said. As for the drawings of Puppy Chan in general, I'll admit that was nasty of me. Persona or not, I just didn't see the character as a representation of the actual person. But you're right, I shouldn't have made that in the first place. Puppy Chan has been through a lot, and my drawings were rude and uncalled for. I do believe she's doing better now though, and that's good. Ellipsis. I'm here because I want to at least come to an understanding with you. I don't wish to hate you. Not over some video, not over art, not over differences in opinion. I just wish for you to understand that just because I'm into that sort of thing doesn't mean I'm a bad person. And the same goes for every person out there that's into Lollicon and such. It's obvious you'll never truly accept it, and that's okay. But the least you can do is leave people who like it be. I don't appreciate the fact you lied about recording me, and I doubt I'll ever be able to fully trust you or your people again, but I don't hate you for it. Ellipsis. I forgive you, Coyote. Now, I did say almost everything I could say has been said. There is one thing I want to touch on, that being the claim, the least you can do is leave people who like it be. No, Shirtbusters, unfortunately that isn't the least I can do. This was a point that came up in our debate in the past video. That being that if an artist uses real-world child pornography as a reference for this art, it facilitates the abuse and harm of children. Asking any rational adult to be okay with the idea of that is lunacy in one of its purest forms, and you would have to be a complete lobotomite to believe that a YouTuber who prides himself on making commentaries on the sort of people who do the things you do will just shrug and say, well, you make a good point, have a nice day, when you present this argument to him. And I apologize for what I did to Puppy Chan. She didn't deserve that, and I understand. That's all I've got to say. Just so we're clear, I'll be blocking you again. No ill will this time. It's just that I know we'll never see eye to eye. And it's better we go our separate ways. You're not a bad person, Coyote. Neither of us are. I find it personally very interesting that Shirtbusters decided to conclude these messages by apologizing to me for something he did to Puppy Chan, which frankly means almost nothing since I wasn't the person who was wronged, and I have no way of conveying a message like that to her. It's interesting that he did an act of spite towards somebody else entirely and then apologizes to somebody who's not even related to that person. I find that really, really interesting, but that's just food for thought, I suppose. And as for his statement of, neither of us are bad people, I suppose the least I can do here is meet him halfway and say that I firmly believe that one of us isn't a bad person. I'll leave it to you, the viewer, to determine who I think is the bad one out of the two of us. The messages conclude here, with Shirtbusters blocking me again. HOLD IT! Or at least when I initially started writing this script, the DMs HAD concluded here. However, it appears our good friend has taken a fancy to me and has been watching my tweets even after blocking me. Shirtbusters, I hate to break your heart, but I think I'm too old for you. Don't go falling in love with me there, champ. Now that was what caused Shirtbusters to want to come back into my DMs, my quote tweet to Fluffy, somebody I'm sure many of you who follow my Twitter are familiar with. For those of you who only watch me on YouTube and don't follow me on Twitter, I'll give you the spark notes. Fluffy is somebody who's been stalking my dear friend Monstrous, who's been a guest on the channel for well over a year now. She's been consistently causing various amounts of drama with another friend of mine, Shiloh Connor, who was previously a member of the now defunct Zoophile Police Twitter account and still remains a very good friend of mine to this day. Fluffy has spent over a year focusing her entire online presence around the goings-on of both of these people and a handful of others who I won't be naming and ultimately has little to nothing worth living for outside of her online obsessions. At it again, eh? The sad thing is, I really can't blame him for not wanting to do that. You're too disingenuous for your own good, Coyote. And what makes it worse is you can't even see it. You don't treat people like people, Coyote. That's your biggest flaw. Evidently, Shirtbusters is under the impression that having all of one call with me makes uh, him an expert on me as a subject, which is a pretty entertaining notion. Shirtbusters, I'll be very blunt with you. I am very good at treating people like people. I'm also very good at treating degenerates like degenerates, lol cows like lol cows, and depraved menaces to society like, well, you. You see, it's not that I lack any ability to treat people like people, it's that I treat people differently based on how they behave, what they enjoy, and what they advocate. 
In your case, as somebody who draws porn of others out of spite and jacks off to depictions of little girls, I treat you like a flabby hunk of pig shit, which is honestly too good for you. In hindsight, I'm actually very happy he decided to block me after each of these messages, because it did give me the opportunity to present you all with this follow-up. I'm not sure if Shirtbusters is a masochist or just a fucking idiot, but when you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. If Shirtbusters decides he wants to slide right back into my DMs to provide more fun topics, you'll probably be seeing another video. I'd say it's unlikely, but considering we just saw lightning strike twice in the same place, who's to say we can't nab it right in a bottle and bring some more energy to the channel with this topic? Either way it goes, that's going to conclude this video. Please support the artists who contributed, and I'll catch you guys later.